All right, so this is my interview for business management uh, and operations management. And so I'm doing an interview with Ryan Brown, who is a graduate from PC as of 2017. He was a business administration major and did a honors research program with Dr. Turner. He also played football at PC. So uh, first question for you, Ryan, tell us a little bit about your academic and professional background. Yeah, I mean, so like you said, I started in a business administration. Um, I kind of wanted to get into more of the quantitative slash uh, statistics realm. So I did a little bit of research um, and that was kind of my first exposure to healthcare with uh, Dr. Turner, just working on a large uh, patient data set. Um, after that, I went to a management consultancy in the, uh, the North Carolina area, uh, working with construction data, uh, operations, financials, um, surveys, things like that. Um, building uh, analytics dashboards uh, for executives um, and kind of like product development um, and that on that side. Uh, after that, around a year ago, I came out to the Bay Area to work for a startup called Innovacer, um, which yep. builds uh, software for um, electronic health records that sits over top of the, the health records and adds uh, predictive analytics, um, machine learning, uh, different implementations with that. So as a research scientist um, in Avacer, um, and sort of transitioning out of that and uh, into another role here uh, shortly, um, that I'll uh, kind of bring to light a little bit later. That's awesome. So did you get involved with any internships while you were at PC? Yeah, I had an a internship at the, the Lawrence County Chamber of Commerce. It was yep. like, uh, I think the technical role was uh, econ economic development intern, but it was just kind of working with their data, um, like cleansing the data, updating a lot of the stuff they had in house and then kind of adding to it, adding to their uh, spreadsheets, kind of cleaning things up and then um, just working with a little bit of like VBA to clean everything up. I got you. Did that carry over a bit to what you're doing now? Um, not necessarily. Uh, I'd say the honors research was more applicable, but the uh, working like within an actual business was helpful. Um, kind of like seeing the day to day and, and, and how you can like apply uh, different technologies within a business help. Um, and then, you know, that kind of carried over to when I was um, sort of working after that, dealing more with the kind of the, the business side of things. That makes sense. So what do you like best about your job now? Uh, I like what I like most about it is it's not like a set path, like say engineering, where there's a, a specific set of parameters for each sect of engineering. Um, it's it's a newer science, so there's always new uh, models, new methodologies that you can implement, um, and nobody really has a set standard for implementing them. So it, there's always a focus on the business side and the output uh, of whatever you're building and the application of it. So. You start with the end, end use case, um, and then you sort of regress wh what you want to do from there. Um, and you set, uh, you might have resource um, maximums, like the resources you have, the data you have, or limitations. Um, and then you can also limit your uh, your threshold, right? We can get 99.9% accuracy, accuracy on something, it's good, but if it takes us nine months to get there, then, then we might curve that back to 80% accuracy or 70%. Mm -hmm. Um, and you're able to kind of do those things while focusing on the business, which is helpful. So you said that you're going to be transitioning to a new uh, role now. Is that going to be yeah. somewhat of the same stuff you've been doing before? Yeah, it's still a healthcare side, health healthcare um, analytics. So I'm working with claims, patient data to, to predict outcomes. Okay. Um, so is there any interesting, funny or powerful stories that uh, has happened in your job? Yeah, I, like going to PC, a lot of times it would, you know, the first question somebody asks you is, is where'd you go to school? Um, and on the East Coast, especially in the Southeast, people will know PC, especially if they're older, because PC has been around for so long. But when I first got out to the Bay, it's always, you know, where'd you go to school? And you end up saying, well, it's a small school in South Carolina. You probably never heard of it. It's called PC. <laughs> You know, over and over again, um, and there, you know, there's one specific case where I think it was my, you know, one of my first weeks um, in the Bay, and you know, they're trying to get a team to go go to a 
um, a university in the Bay Area um, to try to recruit some engineers. Um, and they're like, oh, you know, you have your PhD, right? I'm like, no, I don't have my PhD. They're like, oh, you went to, you went to one of these, you know, UC schools, right? I'm like, no, I didn't, I didn't go to any school in California. And you start explaining it, but then, you know, after you explain it a couple of times, they start, you know, getting their, their perception of PC and what it is and what it means. And then, you know, it, it helps kind of build that out for the next people that come over to the West Coast. I think as you were telling me before, um, being one of the first people from PC on the West Coast, that really, from my perspective, that gives, uh, it seems like you have a unique opportunity to kind of uh, shape people's perspectives and their impressions of PC, which which not many people get that opportunity. Yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's definitely powerful in the sense that, you know, their entire perception of PC is going to be on the one person they, they know that went there. So um, you, you can definitely kind of build out a reputation for the school that way. Yes, sir. All right. So the next question is, now that you have the benefit of hindsight, is there anything you would have done differently in college that would have made you better prepared for this role? Yeah, especially in data science. Um, you know, talk about statistics a lot because it's really applied statistics, but um, you definitely have to have the math base the foundation in math to be able to do a lot of the, the broad scale modeling and, and data science is itself is such a wide spectrum you know there's there's data scientists that focus exclusively on the business side and don't do much modeling and there's data scientists that are really machine learning engineers that do a hundred percent of the work in applied statistics um, and deep learning right so uh, definitely getting the math base even if you focus on the business side and you do less modeling, um, you really need, you know, a math base. So in hindsight, I've probably, you know, done a lot more in math, maybe minored in math. So I wouldn't have to, you know, do what I have been doing, which is going back to different schools to get the, um, all the math that I, you know, left out essentially. That definitely makes sense. So did you just take uh, just the general education requirements for math when you were here? Yeah, I took, uh, I took Calc and then I took the statistics um, that you had to take at the time, but it definitely getting like calc one through three in linear algebra is like the minimum that you want to have as a data scientist. And so did your passion for uh, data analytics start when you got to PC or did you already know you wanted to get in that field beforehand? No, I definitely, I definitely didn't know at all. Um, I remember we took a test of some sort of these are the personality or competency test or something with uh, Dr. Smith and it kept kind of like giving results geared towards um, like analytics, like data analysis, information gathering or, you know, something like that. And then um, both she and uh, Dr. Turner kind of pushed me towards uh, analytics. And then I remember when I was, when I was coming out of um, undergrad, I was, I was looking at, uh, like management consulting jobs because I wanted to be in business and you know that's sort of a common route is going to a management consulting firm being a consulting analyst or something like that so I was looking at a, a couple of management consultancies and then in looking at a management consultancy there was a track through an analytics group and at the time I thought it was too quantitative I didn't want to go into something that quantitative um, and, and really be modeling um, as much as I was uh, but you know after I took it I, I kind of had a, a an affinity towards it and then you know it went from there to from analytics to data science and then from data science to San Francisco and haven't really looked back since. That's awesome so did that first job that you took that got you yeah. onto the data science path was that uh, on the east coast still? Yeah this, this was in Raleigh um, for a company called FMI which is consulting for construction so any anything in the built environment so anything you know, bridges, buildings, you know, pretty much any type of construction. I mean, it was, it was analytics related to, you know, uh, operations data on the company, um, financials. So, you know, looking at their, their returns, their income, all of that, and, and sort of comparing it to other companies. Um, and then also surveys. So we'd build these dashboards for them to look at their performance and then sort of like estimate their performance related to other companies and then try to, highlight what they could do to kind of increase, um, you know, different measures that they were looking at, different KPIs. Um, yeah, so 
the, you know, that kind of got me into analytics as itself, and it was more business analytics um, and, and uh, sort of geared towards business operations, um, like KPI measures. Yep. Um, and then I, I just found that I, I, I appreciated the, the more complex analyses and then got more into that machine learning. Um, and then when I moved out here, it was almost kind of exclusively modeling, uh, machine learning, uh, working on that. That's awesome. All right. So next question right here. Yeah. What life lessons or advice do you have for current students who may want to pursue this field as a career? Yeah, it's, it's definitely to, to realize that most of the, um, what you're going to learn after you have that foundation, right? So you definitely need the math foundation, um, a little bit of statistics as well. Um, so really, like I said, calc one through three, linear algebra, and then maybe some statistics in there from the academic standpoint. But then after that, all of the programming, all of the machine learning methodologies and implementations, whether you're looking at neural nets, boosting models, um, different, different ensemble methods, um, you know, predictive algorithms, because a new one comes out every you know, two weeks and they're all different and they're all sort of like closely related to previous models. Mm -hmm. So if we look at gradient boosting, you know, you start with add a boost and then it moves to XG boost and then these more and more complex models that um, either add to, to, to the performance layer. So they're, they're easier to do with less resources or um, they, 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 they're more finely tuned to working well with less data or sparse data sets or, you know, these other issues that you face with previous models. Um, but you have to, you can't take your degree and say, all right, I, I majored in analytics or whatever and then you also it's harder to get a, a master's in it because all of the programs you look at for analytics for example they're all started in 2017 2018 onward so they're getting better but they're still so limited so um, it definitely helps to kind of be able to to go out and look um, sort of whether it's on you know uh, some of these online courses or you know people host kind of asynchronous like almost Coursera-like courses that you can go on and take and learn different aspects of programming and, and sort of the basis for the models. And if you have that foundation, you can understand the tactics they're taking um, and then sort of learn the implementations as they're researched and, and uh, justified. So uh, just based off your situation, yeah. it's really encouraging from a student's perspective uh, to be able to know that you don't have to use whatever your degree is to yeah. make that your career. Mm -hmm. I would say that business administration and data science is a huge shift in uh, what you want to do because yeah. they're, it's still in the business field, but it's, it's very different. And mm -hmm. myself included and a lot of other students, I know they, we aren't really sure exactly what we want to do yet. Yeah. We can say that we do, but it's it's hard to really know until we're actually out in the world and we actually have to find a job and find what we want to do. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's it's just encouraging to to see a success story and, and see you go out uh, across the country and do something you love. Yeah, and and that's the thing is is business is good if you if if you don't know what you want to do because it's so sort of agnostic um, mm -hmm. in, in the sense that it can apply to, to basically anything. Um, and there aren't a lot of companies like that are going to disqualify you, especially from data science, because data science is sort of closely related um, to business. You know, and you, you'd see a lot of when, when analytics started out, it was all sort of economics backgrounds going to it. Um, so it kind of carries with that is, is having the business experience. And a lot of companies, at least in analytics roles, will want to see business as a degree just because, you know, it reassures them that you can understand sort of the the meaning of the data in the sense that you know sort of how business works and, and where where the data are coming from um, and then also having sort of a background in analytics or data science to add on to that from the uh, the more mathematical uh, perspective that is that is good stuff um that's all the questions i have yeah i was i was kind of curious uh what was your experience of pc like back when you, when you went here? Yeah, it was nice. Uh, I definitely got a lot uh, from, from the sense that it wasn't like huge, you know, thousand person lecture 
pause where you don't really know your professors that well. You don't have, might not have as, as close relationships with them. I think, you know, I was able to get a lot of mentorship from, you know, there's Dr. Smith, Dr. Turner, Dr. Scarborough, like they all kind of were able to work sort of more closely with me um, and kind of help me sort of guide, guide, guide me down uh, a different path. Um, so, you know, it's definitely helpful having less students in that sense. And then also sort of how, how closely knit the community is and then also playing a sport and being able to do that and, and kind of um, uh, working that into to sort of the student life. Oh, yeah. So um, for a lot of the new people coming into PC, obviously yeah. this is this is a little bit of a weird time to be having be uh, having such a big transition. So going to college freshman year yeah. and we have COVID, which obviously puts a, a different spin on, on how college would typically be. But I think all professors are handling it really well. Yeah. I know I've enjoyed Dr. Smith's class so far. Uh, we do a lot of Excel in there and, mm-hmm. and Excel is one of my favorite things to do because it's very interactive. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot that you can learn to do on there. There's a lot of different stuff you can do. Mm-hmm. Um, but what, you said you played football. So what, yeah. what was that like? Because I know it's probably changed a lot since then. It was, it was good. It's, it, it was good, you know, because it, it, it definitely holds you accountable um, to a schedule. Um, and you can't, you know, <clears throat> say, all right, you know, I'm going to procrastinate. I'm not going to get my stuff done. It's, it's no, you know, you're going to wake up at 6 a.m. and practice and run. Um, and, and adding that in is definitely helpful, especially after you, you graduate, uh, you know, you can do whatever you want. Uh, you have a job, right? But being able to balance multiple things at once and, and having that work ethic to be able to say, all right, I need to do these things and I need to be able to balance them out well um, without sort of letting anything suffer in the process is, is helpful. That's definitely, uh, I play football as well. And I think that's definitely yeah. one of the biggest takeaways as far as something I can apply outside of sports like in my real life yeah. uh, it's just having to be accountable and having to balance all of these different aspects uh, but I think I think that's all we got I appreciate you hopping on the call and and uh answering some questions for me yeah sure it's a it's so, a pleasure all right